Good afternoon. I'm so glad you could join me today on Breaking My Silence. Uh, this is uh, Janie, you know, you know Janie's here. Here I am. And I'm so glad you're here with me today. I went to Reno. They had a play with part of my life story was in the play. It was a play about um, prostitution from the 1800s to 2013 of, of uh, tra sex trafficking of today. And it was all in the state of Nevada. And I'll tell you, it was some hoot of a time. We had a blast. That, that crew and, and the, uh, the actresses and actors were just fabulous. Said some things that set you on your ear, I mean, you know, opened your eyes about stuff. It really was a really great play. And I am so fortunate to have uh, one of the wonderful gals with me today. She's in Reno, and I'm here in Minnesota. Minnesota and Reno, we're going to talk, and she's right here. And her name is Rachel Lopez. And here's Rachel. Say hi. Say hi, Rachel. Hi. <laughs> What are you doing out there? Oh, not too much. You know, no. trying to stay cool. It's in the 90s today. So, 90s. You know. Oh, God, yeah. is it really? Yeah. But it's a dry heat, so everyone tells me it should be better. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know, to be hot, hot. So Anything whatever. over 85 yeah, is hot. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to me. I grew up in San Diego. If it's over 75, it's oh, yeah, well 75 too hot. Oh, is so. perfect. That's yeah. what's going to be here today, 75. Nice. nice. Wow. Well, we have cold winters like you have hot summers. That is true. Yeah. That is we, we, true. We, we, we can be uh, uh, probably, uh, oh, maybe 20 below sometimes. Uh, That's like being 110 above in your state. Yeah. Well, I spent it's some the, time in Chicago, you know, so I remember the 20 below. It's the same it's, feeling. It's like. Yeah, exactly. You could put more clothes on. Mm -hmm. to but get still. warm but you can only take so many clothes off right exactly you know exactly. so anyway wh here let me ask you a question when, sure. when did you get into um, the theatrical world I started in theater when I was in high school basically I mean I, I started performing I was in dance and stuff growing up but um, really really got into it more in high school and college I went to college and did you did it and yes so and went on to do community theater uh in san diego and then ended up moving to chicago in my early 20s to do more of it so wow yeah. so your whole your whole life has been in that career yes that's why i'm poor <laughs> well yeah yeah well all artists are poor it's called right. the starving yeah. artist <laughs> right. Right. So this play is going to make you fortune honey this place oh, go around right. the world yeah. <laughs> it better. <laughs> I'm saying the truth. It should. This, this is yeah. one of the biggest issues in the country right now. Oh, it's trying to break this silence of of domestic violence, of mm. of uh, all the abuse that's going on with 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 women right. today. It's absolutely. just horrendous. It is. And it's just barely touching on it. You know, we're just barely oh. touching on it. Absolutely. You know, we got to fight against all these uh, this man ruled world. To right. me, that right. they're ruling because they're showing what they're showing on TV, mm -hmm. and getting away with with it. And we're uh, sitting here going, "Wait a minute! <laughs> don't right. be, don't be telling kids that. That's exactly. wrong. Yeah, <laughs> this is exactly. not right. This is, this is right. wrong." But anyway, when you met Norman, mm -hmm. I mean, did you meet Norman? I did. I, I met Norman at the uh, audition. I Norman believe. Steffens, his name. Yeah. Auditions, yes. And mm -hmm. he and he's been a uh, he he was an executive producer, right? Uh, yeah, for yeah. Warner Brothers, right? For twenty yeah. some years, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And he, had, do you know that he actually had one of the largest, uh, what it was? It's a play, uh, a play theaters. Did and he really? Uh, yes, oh, and hired more yeah. more actresses and actors than any other owner of plays in the country wow. it's in his his bio and uh when when did you get approached for voices in the life by who i i got approached gosh i i'd say probably nine months before because i work with cameron so often who is as you know the director of the show um <clears throat> him and i work together i'm kind of his resident choreographer, so to speak, for the oh. school that he's the theater director 
before. So him and I started talking about it early on. And when he told me about the project, I said, I want in. I definitely want Give me the opportunity to audition. I definitely want that. And I hopefully will be part of this because it sounded so interesting and intriguing. Oh. And it's really hard, especially, I mean, everywhere, it's hard to find work as an actor that you're really passionate about. Right. But especially here in Reno, there's not a whole lot of great theatrical opportunities. So when I heard about that, I, I was I was very excited. Well, I, did you did you feel that you would finally have a chance maybe to speak out uh, about that kind of life because it is around you guys in Reno, prostitution places? Right, yeah. I mean, that was a huge motivation as far as being around it here and being so exposed to it. It's so odd because I've never lived in a state where oh. it's legal. So well, there is no other state. Yeah. Is right. there? I mean, not that I know of. I don't think there is. No. You're right. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. So. <laughs> so that's, it is kind of probably a weird feeling for you to. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, you and I talked about this before. It's when you live in other cities, living in Chicago, I mean, sure, there's always, there's seediness in every city, but you usually have to go to specific areas and then you know you're going to be around that. Here, it's just like you're just saying, you're hopping in a cab and there's a stretch. You know, I couldn't so believe it. Like, yeah, it's really weird. Remember I told you I got in the cab and... and, and <laughs> And then the photo was taken, and I'm like getting in this cabin up above. It says Mustang Ranch. Yes, yes. Of all people, me yeah. to be getting in the cab. I, I know. So much I know. against it. It's like that's got to be your Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what my Christmas cards are going to be. <laughs> I mean, really, that's really something. I, I just can't understand. It must be trillions of dollars exchanging hands. Oh. I to be yeah. able to have that bold and bold, it's Absolutely. bold. Right. right. I mean, I don't know who your mayor is or your governor or whoever mm -hmm. it is in that state. Mm -hmm. but they must be kind of like um, back in the old days. You know, in other words, you know that powerful. this is better. If you keep it legal, at least you have the safety issues and all of that, which is addressed in my monologue um, yeah. that I did in Voices. The woman that I portrayed, uh, she was she's a big advocate for legal brothels because oh sure oh sure no there yeah. there is a lot of advocates for legal brothels. Mm -hmm. So well, you know, well you know what my part my my side is of mm -hmm. the whole right. You know like. When you played a working girl and you played that part, mm -hmm. did you kind of get the feel of how she felt about it? I mean, do you really believe that she was protected? Yeah, I believe that she believes that she she was a success story. I really believe that. And that's why I okay. loved that monologue. I thought that monologue was fantastic. Yeah. Because, yeah. And Maggie Anthony, by the way, wrote that and did a tremendous job. Yeah. Um, I thought it was amazing that I, out of all of the monologues in the entire play, this is the one where she's pretty much fine with it. I mean, she's did she, happy did, did she have a pimp? Did she have uh, a husband or a lover? She, she had, no, she never addresses any pimps. She says she, she went out on her own for a while and kind of her and other girls protected each other. She never addresses having a pimp. In, in Working Girl. So I don't know if that's true or if that just wasn't covered in the model. One out of 80,000 women don't have a pimp. Wow. One. That's it. There is yeah. very few women that don't have a love, someone that loves them and they feel loves them. Right. You know, right. I mean, because it's a very lonely life. Sure. Prostitution is yeah. a very lonely life. Oh yeah. If if you don't have anyone because you don't know those guys, you're not going to see them again. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's like you you you're going to see this guy for five minutes and and right and and I don't know. I I just I, I lived that life of a prostitute right. for thirteen years. Right. And without Johnny. Uh, 
thought that he loved me, thought that I loved him. And he was taking every dime I was getting, but I was giving it to him. Right, yeah. Working girl. You played the working girl, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Tell me all about the working girl. Tell me. Okay. She, um, in the monologue, what we cover in the monologue is how she started off uh, with stripping. So she started off stripping and then moved into, um, let's see, from stripping, she went into porno. And then from porno, right. she got into legalized prostitution. Right. And after experiencing legalized prostitution, she does admit to going off on her own and trying to do it over the internet for a while. And she admits that it was a really bad experience. She doesn't address ever getting beaten up herself, but she says that somebody who covered for her on a date got beat up pretty badly. And so that made her go back to the legal brothels. And today she lives in Northern Nevada and then works in Southern Nevada, goes down a couple times a month, makes the money. She's married. Her husband knows he doesn't care. And she has two stepsons that, so she, by day she plays the PTA soccer mom. And then a couple times a month goes and it's amazing. And, he and that, care. I, I thought her monologue was so. It's cool. I mean, just, it was cool. Crazy. I, I love that I love that you met someone like that because it's very she's very I'd love to meet her. She's very interesting. Oh yeah, and I didn't meet her. That's what was really excruciating about this process was I didn't get to meet her and I really wanted to, but oh. I guess that wasn't an option. Uh, I met the author, Maggie, as you know. Um, yeah, I know but I, I was not able to meet her. So I had to pretty much through talking with Cameron and a little bit with Maggie and just through yeah. the monologue figure out what you did a her... perfect job oh, you did a beautiful you. job thank you I, and and i hope that 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 she's safe i hope that 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 that, that her husband doesn't turn against her i hope so too. she's going to bed with other men yeah i mean right. i don't know about your husband oh. but uh <laughs> oh, that, that, that I, 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 it might be a hell of a storm going on in the house if 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 perfect. if they thought that you were going to bed with other men. Right. Even if it's it was so, for a few it's bucks. It's very sad. It's, it is very sad. Um, yeah, but it's very sad. she doesn't view it that way. She looks at it from what she's I She's already guess, hardened not, from it. She's, yeah, she's, she's numb remember. from it. You, you become numb. Right. Right. You, right. you don't have normal feelings like normal people. You What's interesting a, too is she doesn't she doesn't address anything about uh, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. I I don't know if she ever went there. Oh. It's really yeah I, I know you would think that would yeah. probably. Happen. I got my opinions, but I'm not gonna say nothing. Yeah no no no, no I know you it's know just, I mean I. I, that just stood out to me about this monologue in particular, because I read all the monologues when we auditioned. Yeah. You know, I got to read through the whole script and figure out which ones <laughs> I was most attracted to. And, uh, yeah, that one stood out to me for that reason. Well, that, would, that stands out to me, too, because it's just, it's just kind of neat to f actually, actually feel that I could actually maybe meet that woman because I'd love to meet her. No. I, I know she'd be a fun thing, to, fun gal to meet, and... Yeah, I just would love love to have met her because yeah. there's very few women that take it on like that. I mean, of course she was in stripping. She she went through the whole gambit, so she's she's she hardened inside from it. Yes, yes, she's got a crust. She has. She says something at the very beginning. I don't know if you remember in the monologue. Um, it's, it's like I'm being interviewed, and I say yeah. to the interviewer, "I'm not going to talk about my father." So she definitely has some father issues doesn't say what they were and according to Cameron and Maggie she wouldn't even touch the subject she said this interview will be over if you continue to ask about my dad okay well you know you know what my dad did to me oh no he molested mm -hmm. me by the time I was three till I was nine three uh, really yeah uh, 